Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler, and in this series of videos, we're taking a look at new games between AlphaZero, DeepMind's general purpose artificial intelligence system, and Stockfish, winner of the TCC Season 9 Computer Chess Championship and one of the strongest engines in the world. This game we called Bold Sir Lancelot. Um, Sir Lancelot was a knight of the round table and uh, one of uh, King Arthur's trusted lieutenants. And, um, well, as you can imagine, the star of the show is the knight. And it features one of uh, AlphaZero's trademark long knight manoeuvres, in which um, the knight moves through the position, other pieces stepping aside in order to let it shine as the star of the show and find its key outpost deep into the black position. Um, it's a wonderful game, actually. Uh, it really shows command of the whole board. So um, well, I hope you enjoy it too. The game started d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, b6, and g3. One of uh, AlphaZero's favourite openings. It scores very heavily in this, uh, in this line, and it's also one of the most popular lines in, um, in modern-day chess. Stockfish um, played quite conservatively, but with um, a very normal, natural way of playing. This move, knight e4, um, aims to exchange a pair of minor pieces because, um, well, black's position is a little bit cramped. It's actually got one minor piece too many um, for the position. So exchanging off gives, uh, gives black a bit of breathing space. After bishop d2, d5, we get a very typical alpha zero moment. Um, c takes d5, e takes d5. Alpha Zero loves fixing the central structure. Um, this gives it maximum uh, freedom to make use of outposts around its own central pawn, so that's like knight on e5. And it also loves playing on the wing, and having a fixed centre gives it the freedom to do that. Uh, when I say playing on the wings, it loves playing against the opponent's king's wing. That's where it likes playing. So the game proceeded uh, fairly normally. Bishop f4, knight a6, rook d1. Uh, Stockfish likes this uh, system of development with uh, the pawn on c5 and the knight on a6. And here Stockfish took an, um, an interesting decision. Um, it played the move c5 to c4. This move gains space and gains a tempo, but it does release the central tension. And what that means is that white no longer needs to pay attention to the centre. And that means that white's pieces are then free to do other stuff on the wings, for example. It's not um, a bad, bad move, but um, it does contain the seeds of disaster, you might say, by giving AlphaZero freedom to, uh, to look for counterplay elsewhere. After the subsequent moves, queen c2, knight b4, queen c1, queen d7, AlphaZero played h4. A very typical AlphaZero move. I have to say, I, I barely looked at it uh, before uh, seeing AlphaZero's games, but now I see it in every position. AlphaZero is aiming to possibly to move that pawn up to h6 to create some dark square weaknesses in the opponent's king's position. Alpha Zero loves trying to exploit um, colour complexes. Um, and the other point is knight g5, when the knight will attack the pawn on h7 and the pawn on f7 and generally put pressure on the, uh, on the black position. Stockfish continued with rook c8, a3, knight takes c3, knight c6. Queen b1, rook c8, rook e1. So white is looking to play the move e2 to e4, breaking in the center, which Stockfish prevents with knight a5. And now we start, start seeing the alpha zero magic. Knight to g5. So what is white doing with this move? Well, white is obviously threatening a very nasty queen, takes h7 check, and also threatening the move e2 to e4. Stockfish decides to stop both of those threats with a, a committal move. It plays the move f7 to f5. So this blocks the b1h7 diagonal and also stops the move e2 to e4. However, what this move does do, it uh, concedes the e5 square. A pawn can no longer defend that square. So long term that could be a bit tricky, but Stockfish doesn't doesn't, often doesn't mind making those sort of weaknesses. It feels that despite a, a long-term concrete weakness, it can still keep its position afloat. Another nice point here is that um, as soon as Alpha Zero has achieved something with, its, with a piece, it doesn't just leave it hanging there and wait for it to be chased away. It redeploys it immediately. It's got purpose. It's looking for a new, fresh idea, a new way to maximize the use of this knight. And uh, the knight goes back to f3, aiming for e5. Bishop f6. 
And as we've sort of uh, mentioned, um, Alpha, Alpha Zero's reached a position here in which Stockfish is fine. Um, uh, it's got a decent position, it's developed. But finding a real active plan for Stockfish is not easy. And um, in these sort of positions, Alpha Zero feels, you'd say, this, these sort of positions very well and always takes the advantage of a lull in the play to take an extra little advantage. First of all, it consolidates its position with Rook A2, protects the pawn on E2, important later, and also gets out of the way of an attack by Knight B3. And then after H6, black takes control of the G5 square, white plays A4. And this little move, what does it do? It uh, takes a little queenside space. It well, gives white uh, a little outpost for a piece here. And it also does something else that we'll see later. Queen e6 from, uh, from Stockfish. And here it begins. Um, Alpha Zero starts off a fantastic plan um, with a move that, it often, that is often the signal of something uh, great, um, but that looks completely innocuous. It's this move, King h2. What does this mean? Stockfish played bishop c8. I mean, Stockfish now is, is in a sort of waiting mode. It says, well, OK, I can't do much with my position, but I don't believe that you can do anything to me. And so um, um, Alpha Zero now is going to be running around, tugging at little threads, trying to, uh, to unravel the black position. Rook h1. Rook h1, you say, what on earth is that move? Well, you see it after this move, h5. Alpha Zero is fixing this weakness on g6. And if uh, black plays something like queen f7, attacking the pawn, the king retreats to g1, and the rook on h1 is defending this pawn on h5. Note as well that rook h1 was made possible by this move rook a2, three or four moves earlier. Stockfish continues in waiting mode, king h8. And now the next part of the plan, knight g1. What is that move? Queen f7, bishop f3. Well, the knight's made space for the bishop, so it can protect both e2 and h5 from uh, one square. And this knight is moving round to h3. And I think you, can, you get an idea of where that knight is heading for. That knight is heading for g6. And after king g8, this move, bishop c1. The bishop steps aside, says, Mr. Knight, go along your way, please f4 to g6, that's where you're going. And the other nice point about this is that this bishop can move to a3. This move a4 on move 23, we're now on move 30, has freed an excellent diagonal for the bishop if required. After rook e8, alpha zero likes to do this, um, exploits his outpost, um, sort of teases the black position a bit, seeing whether it can get an extra advantage. It redeploys its rook on h1. That rook has performed its purpose. That rook is brought back into the center. And um, I think one of the key things, it's solidifying the white position so that no sacrifice with bishop takes d4. You've always got to watch out for this with, uh, with this tactical monster stockfish. And uh, no bishop takes d4 is taking place. Everything is safe and solid. And after knight a5, queen b1, bishop c8, the knight moves into f4, bishop g5, I'm not crazy about this decision from uh, Stockfish to exchange off the dark squared bishops because it makes black's position even more rigid. Um, after all, black's pawns are all knight squares. All it's got is the light squared bishop and, um, well, and a big dark square weakness there. But, OK, it's a difficult, uh, it's a difficult position to defend. I mean, this is, uh, it's you know, hard to give good advice sometimes. But I'm criticising Stockfish. You know, I'm criticising the decisions it makes, but it still isn't finished yet. White's done masses of great things, but the position is still there, solid as a rock. So how does Alpha Zero um, uh, get at uh, Black's position? Well, I think um, yeah, Demis Hassabi said that um, Alpha Zero is great in optimizing its position. And that means finding pieces, finding places where its position are absolutely optimal. And this is what, it's do what it does. Knight on e5, the rook comes to b5 a great outpost for the rook, attacking the pawn on d5. I mean, if black tries to drive it away, then the rook simply moves back. And, uh, well, black's actually got an extra weakness, the pawn on b6, which is held back by the pawn on a4. So um, if black plays a move like knight d6, then we're going to get a, a preview of what uh, alpha zero's idea was in the game. Rook takes d5, and after bishop takes d5, bishop takes d5, 
why it's got some massive light squares. Stockfish doesn't want to allow that. Um, it plays the move knight a5. Um, and the queen comes in, the knight comes in, offering the exchange of queens. Obviously, Alpha Zero would love to exchange off the queens because that's the last defender of black's dark squares. It would also mean that the uh, d5 pawn is virtually impossible to hold. And this move is great. Queen e5. Um, you sort of notice how far advanced the queen on e5 and the rook on b5 are. This is one of Alpha Zero's things, really, one of, the, one of its themes, that it loves putting its major pieces on outposts very close to the opponent's pieces. And normally you can't do that because um, those high-value pieces can easily be driven away by a pawn or a lower-value piece. And yet Alpha Zero manages to time it perfectly. The queen is uh, invulnerable. Uh, the bishop can't move from e6. We've got stuff like knight e7 checks or hanging pawns on f5 or d5. So um, black just has to leave it there. But I have to say that uh, there's no engine better than stockfish at just absorbing pressure. Now, the next few moves are very nice. Um, Alpha Zero, again, optimizes to the maximum. It's got a few useful moves to make. It wants its bishop back on g2. Um, it wants the rook on a1. Rook's not doing anything on d1 anymore. So let's place it on a1, where it defends a potentially loose pawn. And after king h7, we start getting onto a, a crucial uh, um, area of the game. Bishop f g8, and rook takes d5. This is very typical for uh, Alpha Zero. I think, um, I mean, Stockfish is great at setting up these sort of fortresses, you call them all, almost, in which, uh, you know, you think, well, I've got all these squares, all these fantastic possibilities, but how do I break through? And Alpha Zero's key idea here is always an exchange sacrifice. Give up material in order to sweep away um, the black barricades and then rush forward with your own, uh, with your own forces. The funny thing about this one is that um, this is fantastic judgment because it wasn't clear to me that this was going to be so fantastic for, uh, uh, for white. But um, um, yeah, in practice, it really is. I mean, I was looking through this game, I was showing it to, uh, to my co-author of Game Changer, Natasha Regan, and she said to, to me, Matthew, are you really sure this is good? And, uh, you know, got me worried and I went away and checked it again with the engine, but it really is true. I think the key point is, is that although the rooks have got space on their back two ranks, they can't get active in a combined fashion together and get into the white position. And you see what, uh, what uh, Stockfish tries here. It tries to play the move b5 and activate its, um, uh, its rook and tries to get the rook attacking the pawn on c3 with b3 and just chip away at those enormous central pawns. And this is uh, maybe the second to last great moment in the game. Um, this knight on g6 looks fantastic. I mean, after all, you spent so much effort getting it there. I mean, it should stay there forever, right? No, it can be brought back. It can be brought back to cover those pawns. Because Alpha Zero knows that um, after the move rook a8, its central pawns are going to move on and on and on and on, and they're never going to stop. Um, Stockfish tries to uh, bring its king back, bring its rook back, but it's all too much. And uh, fittingly, the, uh, the knight has the final say. Knight d4, the knight's going to come into this square, and black and white is going to push through with e7 and d8 and win the game. So why do I love this game uh, so much? I think I, I love these you know, wonderful knight maneuvers. Um, they always say that um, you can see great skill in a young player um, uh, by the way that um, that, uh, that player handles uh, his knights. And um, I remember playing against a very young Luke McShane, one of the most talented players that Britain's ever produced. And um, in one such position, he found this great way to move his knight. And I thought, oh, he's going to be good. And he did turn out to be. And of course, you know, Alpha Zero is a very young player as well. So, um, so I guess that's, uh, that's kind of fitting. Um, but um, uh, also this whole beautiful um, maneuvering over the whole board and this beautiful thematic thing at the end that the knight, the star of the show, has the final say at the end of the game, knight d4, coming into c6 and shepherding the pawn home. That makes it into a beautiful thematic game. So I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as me.